Hello, I'm Father Martin, and welcome to St. Joseph's Wharf upon Dern, or as some of the locals would say, Wharf upon Dern. Today, we celebrate the feast of St. Thomas the Apostle, but it's also our final Mass of our virtual pilgrimage to Lourdes. If we were in Lourdes, the Mass would be preceded by a lot of panic, packing all our suitcases, if you're anything like me, checking the room a thousand times to see if I've forgotten to pack anything. And then it's the mad rush to the church to try and get there on time. And for the priests, whoever is the one who is the main celebrant, he's always conscious of mass not going on too long so people can get off afterwards. But today is different, hopefully. So if you just sit back and relax as we bring all we have experienced during our virtual pilgrimage and we now offer that to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In today's Gospel, Thomas doubts no longer, but believes. to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. You are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh, the splendour of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. 
you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on me. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may glory in the feast of the blessed Apostle Thomas, so that we may always be sustained by his intercession and believing may have life in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, whom Thomas acknowledged as the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. You are no longer aliens and foreign visitors. You are citizens like all the saints and part of God's household. You are part of a building that has the apostles and prophets for its foundations, and Christ Jesus himself for its main cornerstone. As every structure is aligned on him, all grow into one holy temple in the Lord, and you too in him are being built into a house where God lives, in the Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Go out to the whole world, proclaim the good news. Go out to the whole world, proclaim the good news. O oh, praise the Lord, all you nations. Acclaim him, all you peoples. Go out to the whole world. Proclaim the good news. Strong is his love for us. He is faithful forever. Go out to the whole world. Proclaim the good news. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Jesus said, you believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Thomas, called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. 
when the disciples said, we have seen the Lord, he answered, unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hands, and I can put my finger into the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas. Put your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand. Put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, you believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. The Gospel of the Lord. I know it probably says a lot about me, but I love saints and biblical figures who aren't perfect. Yes, I know that all of them, obviously apart from Jesus and Mary, are not perfect, but some seem to be less perfect than others. You have poor old Jonah, being called by God and going in the completely the opposite direction until God sends a big fish to put him right. And today we celebrate another one, Saint Thomas, forever known as Doubting Thomas. Thomas doesn't appear much in the gospel. But when he does, he certainly makes his mark. There's the instance when Jesus hears that Lazarus is ill. The disciples are concerned about Jesus' safety, but Jesus decides to go. And Thomas says, come on, let us die with him. At the Last Supper, when Jesus is saying his farewell to his disciples and says, you know the way to the place where I am going. It's Thomas that speaks up. Lord, how do we know where you are going if we don't know the way? If Thomas hadn't have asked that question, then Jesus wouldn't have said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But in today's Gospel, we get Thomas's most famous, or perhaps infamous, appearance. Whenever I hear that Gospel, I always wonder, where was Thomas when Jesus first appeared? The disciples were locked away in the room for fear of the Jews. So where was Thomas? But wherever he was, it meant that he missed Jesus' first appearance. And because of the type of person he was, he didn't believe that Jesus had appeared to his fellow disciples. 
But he was in for a great surprise eight days later when Jesus appeared again. He must have felt so stupid and so awful but he doubted not only his friends, but Jesus too. Perhaps the reason I like Thomas so much is because of what he does next. What he could so easily have done is to run away, being ashamed to show his face in front of Jesus and his friends again. But he doesn't. What he does do is become the first disciple to acknowledge Jesus as God when he says, my Lord and my God. But he doesn't stop there either. In his realisation that Jesus was indeed God, he doesn't look back at all his mistakes but he looks forward so much so that tradition has it that he takes the good news to India during this virtual pilgrimage we may have taken the opportunity to look back on our lives on our relationship with others and our relationship with God. And like Thomas, we may have despaired about some of the things we've done, the times that we too have doubted Jesus. Today at this Mass, it's a great opportunity to offer to God all our doubts, all our despair, all our unhappiness, all our sinfulness, and place them on the altar. And then, perhaps at the consecration, when the body and blood of Jesus are raised, we can say with Thomas, my Lord and my God, and use today as an opportunity not to look back at what we have done, but to look forward at what we can do with Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, we ask our Father to hear our prayer. We pray for Francis, our Pope, and Ralph, our Bishop, the clergy, and all God's people. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who hold public office and those who assist them in promoting the common good. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for Bishop John on this, his anniversary of his installation as the second Bishop of Hallam. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who have doubts about their faith. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for peace among nations, that peoples may serve God in freedom of heart. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are suffering or have suffered from the coronavirus outbreak, 
those who have died, those who have been ill, those who are shielding, and for their families. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for ourselves that this virtual pilgrimage may have been an opportunity to deepen our faith. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our own intentions. Lord, in your mercy, And we ask Mary, our mother, to pray for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, Hear these and all our prayers. Help us to look forward in our faith, knowing that you are always with us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Through to the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through to the vine and work of human hands, it shall become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
We render you, O Lord, the service that is your due, humbly imploring you to keep safe your gifts in us, as we honour the confession of the Apostle St. Thomas, and offer you a sacrifice of praise. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For you, eternal shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hope, heaven and earth, are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, but they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection an ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Thomas, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Ralph, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him.
Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. So at this time, we can make an act of spiritual communion. We can ask Jesus to enter into our lives, and he will come.
let us pray. O oh God, as we truly receive in this sacrament the body of your only begotten Son, grant, we pray, that we may recognise him with the Apostle Thomas by faith as our Lord and our God, and proclaim him by our deeds and by our life, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. So may we pray for each other as we look forward and journey in our faith, and pray that we will all see each other again in Lord's next year. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord.